What is going on, comic fans? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. It's Sunday. That means it's time for another episode of At Weeks in the spoiler filled look back at this week in comics, news, and more. There's definitely some stuff to talk about, a ton of comics to get into, and we're going to do it right after this. <music> Sure to check out Big Time Collectibles if you haven't ever done it. They have a fantastic website, bigtimecollectibles.com. They're also on social medias across the board. You can find them over there. They're uh, doing all kinds of cool stuff. Most notably right now, I want to point out, they do have a monthly mystery box subscription service that's absolutely bangers. That last one that I got was like, uh, it's like $60 a month shipped. And that last one I got was over $150 in value. They're, they're really awesome. And if you need anything cleaned or pressed, Check the description. Justin's Comics is linked in there for Instagram. He can hook it up. He can take care of you for the amazing prices, fast turnaround times, all that good stuff. And a huge shout out to ABX Comics and Games. That's where I pick up all my new comic book day books. A fantastic shop. They've got a Facebook group. It's also linked down below. And I do want to point out Pops Attic on Instagram is linked down below. Be on the lookout over there. A lot of those exclusives and stuff that come out of those mystery boxes that I get are getting listed this week, including that elusive crow foil limited edition uh, super limited so uh you might want to make sure your notifications are on for pops attic page a lot of good stuff and um yeah yeah lastly the awesome lemay print that i forgot to give away last week i'm going to try double hard to remember to give away this week i have a note written down in front of me but to celebrate comics carrying cancer expanding our reach this year trying to get in front of more eyes we uh will have a presence via dj links he'll be set up at king kong five up in where's it at uh, new jersey park ridge new jersey so we got 50 of these prints made by that austin lemay did the fantastic art for they'll be selling exclusively at king kong if any are left over we'll post them up for sale somewhere somewhere i don't know if we're going to sell them off the instagram page or put them up on the big cartel website we're going to do something with them but if there's any left over we'll announce it over there and on our channels but to celebrate that and to try to get people excited and all that, we do have artist proofs. And we're going to be giving away one of the artist proofs tonight. So if you want a shot to win this beautiful 11 by 17 awesome LeMay print, don't go anywhere. Hang out. We'll do that before we leave. And uh, as a reminder, we will also, all of us, everyone will be together at Heroes Con this year. We'll have a booth set up at number 1769. Major, major stuff coming for that. You will not want to miss what's going on. And if you want to go ahead and get involved in comics, hearing cancer, you can hit that QR code or head over to the Instagram page. The uh, details, the links and everything are in the bio. We're already over $5,000 in donations. So we're one tenth of our way to our goal of $10,000 or $50,000 this year. The official three day event that we do here on YouTube, the big extravaganza will be the first weekend in October. So mark your calendars, get ready. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Save your pennies. Save your pennies. And as usual, I'm doing my part. Ar within arm's length, Mark has, Mark has a bottle full of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. I do. Let's say hey to some of the people in the chat. Las Cruces. What is going on, homie? How are you tonight? There's the man, the myth, the legend. Mr. DJ Links is in the building throwing those custom emojis. You get access to those by hitting that join button down below and becoming a channel member. J-Man, my man, what's happening? I liked X-Men, and I'm pumped for Godzilla next week also. Yeah, to that, I got to reach out to, uh, of course, next Sunday will be the spoiler special for Godzilla X-Kong New Empire. Yeah. You want me to hold those? Got it. You're silly. You want me to help you put them on? Yeah, do you want to put these on or different ones? You only want different ones. Those are soaking wet. You get slobbered all over them. Seriously, feel that. But I want them. No, you go ask mommy if you want those or not. Okay, I just put them on. Okay, if you say so. Next week, next Sunday, per usual, when a big movie releases that uh, hype for, we're going to do the spoiler special for Godzilla X Kong New Empire. I've got my tickets for Thursday night, the first IMAX showing that was available after the kids are out of school. Paul's got his tickets for the weekend as well. We'll definitely uh, reach out to a couple of people and try to add a couple of people to the panel for that. It'll be a fun one. A lot to talk about, I'm sure. It's going to be going to be awesome. What is going on, Pops? There he is. Member Milestone Chat, 17 months coming from Trev, the shipping guru. Good evening, Mark, Paul, and Legionnaires. 
What's going on, Trev? I hope you're doing good. He's got a stream later on tonight. Make sure y'all check out his channel. Carlito, my man. What is happening, homie? It's been good seeing Carlito doing some more random streams here and there as well. I hear that award-nominated world-class letterer will be at the C3 booth at HeroesCon. Justin Birch may or may not be there. We shall see. I'll be there for Godzilla. Well, heck yeah. Nice. I'll definitely reach out to you. It'd be good to have you on again. That was definitely fun last time. But uh, also, coming up uh, two Sundays from now, we'll draw for the Legion loot. I want to go and put that out there. I've been having a lot of fun curating this one with April 3rd being official Ghost Machine Day with the launch of Red Coat, Geiger, as well as Rook Exodus. I wanted to have the Legion loot cater to the front end of that month versus the back end. Got all kinds of good stuff. Like all the keys associated with Ghost Machine will be included in that box. And uh, I'll probably grab some of the new stuff too. Possibly if I could get my hands on it. I didn't pre-order any of it. So that just reminded me I need to talk to Paul. Those uh, The B covers for all three of those make one big connecting cover. Ivan Rice, right? Those are three. <laughs> yes. It's plus, amazing. Plus, the, if you're a member, uh, you can also probably have a say in what goes into the Legion loot this, this month, right? Because you have a poll, right? Yeah, I posted a poll today to celebrate X-Men 97 not being a flaming turd. As a matter of fact, it was amazing. And we're going to talk about that tonight as well. Uh, I always have keys sitting around for the Legion League purposes. And they're around here somewhere. Yeah, they're right here. Of course they are. So I put up a poll on my on the uh, community tab. You can vote for which book you want added to the Legion League. Of course, it's going to be heavily Ghost Machine themed because that's the biggest thing happening right now. But it's also going to have the big time collectibles, exclusives and everything added to it. But we can also add to celebrate X-Men 97 being good. We got the first appearance of Bishop in X-Men 282 and the first appearance of Jubilee in X-Men 242. So we're going to add one of those to the Legion loot. And you can have a say. So whether you're a channel member or not, the poll is open to everybody. So uh, share it out there. Let people know what's there. If your book isn't in the lead and uh, we'll, we'll let, let y'all decide on that. Thought that would be kind of fun to do. Yeah, it's not often that people uh, are, can win a prize and you get to tell them, I get to tell you what prize I want. Yeah, give me that. Yeah. <laughs> give me that. Yeah. Also, don't forget to check out Sector 2815 right here on the YouTubes as well. Every Tell them about what you got going on, what we do every Monday and every other Wednesday. Every mor every Monday morning at 10 o'clock, we do uh, the DC Comics Deep Dive. Uh, this this week, because we're kind of between events right now, um, we are actually, and because of the Godzilla movie, uh, Godzilla Con movie coming out next weekend, we are taking a look. We're going to recap the first five issues, kind of in a quick recap, uh, but then we're going to go in a deep dive into issue number six of the Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. So look for that tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock on my channel. And then every other Wednesday night, we do Guess That Key, um, where we do exactly we bring in um uh comics uh everybody brings a key comic this week uh beside mark who's always there thank you mark uh, we also have uh john's comics with kids um will be joining us and we have uh, one of the one half of the uh writing team uh behind the new crash down comic um it is ryan Sargent, who you may know better as fire guy ryan he will be with us wednesday night as well so thank thanks to mark uh, he will be here so uh yeah looking forward to that yeah it should be and I posted Paul's link down there. If you haven't already subbed up to Paul, be sure to do that. Be sure to do that. Guess that key is a fantastic, fantastic show where the entire live chat is part of the show as well. And he always has these amazing, amazing, massive giveaways that he does each show. So uh, be sure to follow him on Instagram to see what he's going to give away. And he, uh, a lot of times he'll do a swerve. And he'll, he'll end up bringing an extra one that he won't reveal till the night of the show live on the show. So you never know when that's going to happen. So definitely be there for your chance to win. You just got to be present. It's definitely a good time. And uh, I do want to go and say, because we went all in on the monster verse DC crossover, we recorded it already. It'll post tomorrow at 10. Like he said, that came out this week, but we are going to swerve that issues review over to there. Cause we went in full depth of the entire series. You're going to want to check that out. And if you haven't read it, uh, this that that video should make or break you. You you can watch that video and just go pick up the final issue and ride it from there. Like we got you covered. If you didn't invest in it, that's fine. But you, after that, you might want to see how it all ends. There's a lot a lot of cool stuff riding on that series. Definitely a lot of cool stuff. What is going on, Brian? The LCS. Yo, know, this would be torture if the whole ghost machine launch day was just an April Fool's joke. 
not cool. And also to throw it out there, uh, <laughs> first Sunday of every month is a Legion loot giveaway, and the last day of the month is on a Sunday. So it's going to be like 14, it's like a full seven days into the uh, into the next month before we'll do it. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Well, Boar, what is happening? How are you doing this evening? Scotty finally made it. Hey, hey, I didn't think y'all be on. Are y'all on next Sunday? Res Sunday? Of course. Of course. Uh, if you if you check out the vlog that I posted, you see that uh, we actually went to the church yesterday, had a fantastic day up there, took the kids and they did the Easter extravaganza stuff at the church. We do the, the Easter egg hunting and they have like games and stuff inside the gymnasium. So we did all of that, uh, that kind of stuff with the kids at the church. They did it the weekend before as everyone gets busy with family stuff. You know, people go to church, but then they kind of disperse to go do family stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Happy, happy, Palm, happy Palm Sunday today. Yeah, Palm Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wait on that till okay. next Sunday, because this this Tuesday is standard, right? Right. And then the next, so yeah, we'll time that out with next one. As a matter of fact, depending on how things go, we might first announce it on Guess That Key. Get past this Tuesday. And then we can we can announce it Wednesday. Okay. But I want to try to get everything set up on my end for it with like the uh yeah, I hear you. you know I'm saying? That, way, that you. way we can have it to present. Yep. So be sure to subscribe to Sector because we're having like a half private conversation. We might have a big announcement for guess that key if uh because I want to also verify again, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would be that'd be awesome. Like to uh, announce it there first, because that's on the evening, you know, in the weekday. Yeah, because that'd give us that would give us the full seven days at that point. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we're good at we're good at making up plans on the fly. Look at us go. There you go. Look at, me and Paul got some stuff in the works, so we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. Very excited, and, it, and it, for everybody watching as well, mm -hmm. it's gonna be fantastic. ABX Comics and Games. <laughs> Just, just a Paul, a Paul watching a Paul and a Mark getting to watch live tonight. <laughs> Hashtag Winter Legion. There's levels to this, Paul. There is. What is going on, madam? How are you today? Popping to say a quick hey. Have a great show. I know we have sunrise service on the beach bright and early. That'd be pretty cool, a sunrise mm -hmm. service. Just sunrise on the beach in general is cool. I don't think you go right. wrong with that, unless right. there's lightning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I don't, dude, I don't. I didn't sit there and make a bunch of like images mm -hmm. like I did it last week. I've been I've been busy trying to get all this stuff read, but there you are there are some massive things to talk about. Most notably, a uh, ghost uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire released this weekend to a underwhelming response. It got forty four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and it pretty much split the the actual people I talked to who saw it. I have not had an opportunity to see it, but it kind of seems like a However, it did actually beat expectations dollar wise. What it pull? Forty five million. That's domestic. Oh, obviously, domestic. Domestic. D domestic, it and it was it was it was projected to do like forty two. So not it didn't like blow it away, but it's any time you can meet or do better, you're doing pretty well. So, um, I did see it. Um, I liked it. Um, it wasn't the best Ghost Ghostbuster movie I've seen. I like the last one better than this one. Um. Uh, just because uh, we had we were talking when we were filming our our deep dive, one of the things that I thought was um, a little bit lacking was it just seems as though you know everything kind of I felt it would be it didn't seem like it was enough a biggest enough threat even though this guy was you know this um, uh, the 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 evil guy was taking all the the ghosts like everything happened pretty much on the beach in New York City and then in the firehouse didn't seem like it was a a huge I mean. It obviously was, but it didn't seem like it was a huge threat that was impacting or could impact millions of people. And um, so that's kind of where I thought it lost me a little bit. But um, it was uh, it was still good, I thought. Um, Becker gave it a 6.1. Spangler's granddaughter is the shits. She really is. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, she was fantastic in the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was like, she was she's what carried it. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. What a curveball. Well, the movie was made on only a $100 million budget, which is very reasonable. That's... In all reality, like, I know you had them in your mouth. You didn't go get another pair. Which, 
which is actually 20 million more than the last one. Uh, it was the last one was either 70 or 80 million um, that it was uh, that it cost. So it actually was a little bit more. Um, they spent a little bit more on this one. Um, Paul Rudd, I just love Paul Rudd. Um, you know, he can. He's one of those people who could probably you know read the read the phone book and it would be, it would be funny. Yeah, he's an American treasure at this point, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. But yeah, I think a hundred million dollars a fantastic budget, especially considering, like you said, they made what forty five on opening weekend. That's just right. a mess. So you, you can you can always expect it to be a little bit. Most movies, most blockbusters, especially when you compile the, the worldwide box office, it's always higher than the domestic. So except that this time because all, I don't think I don't think it's open in as many places. I read somewhere that it only made like sixteen or seventeen million um, worldwide. So it's at like a 61, 62 so far right now. I think so. Overall, it should end up doing just. Fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was fun. I mean, I, I definitely have had worse times at the theater. Um, it's it's less than two hours, so if you have a, like a two hour block or whatever, um, and want to be entertained, it, you know, it really was worth it. I mean, the they bring back obviously if you've seen the trailers, they bring back you know Bill Murray and uh, Dan Aykroyd and. Um, uh, Ernie Hudson um, as well, and then um, there's a new guy who's called the Firemaster. Um, can't think of the actor's name now, but he was um, the new from Eternals, right? Yeah, the guy from Eternals. Yep. Um, there's a whole thing that he does with trying to. Um, he's a Firemaster, and he's getting used to his powers and everything. And this whole thing where he's trying to light the, um, he's trying to light a candle. It's kind of kind of funny. So. Yeah, I'm sure that I'll enjoy watching it. I can't imagine not enjoying it. I I like the all female cast version that they did. I completely understand why a lot of people didn't enjoy it. They like, have I've pretty never... much they pretty much said that. I mean, they don't even reference it. It's like it never it never happened. Yeah, it's like yeah. it happened in a different dimension. Yeah, but I, I'm saying I still enjoyed yeah. that one. But I think a lot for me had to do with it is I love that Saturday Night Live alumni that was mm -hmm. a big yep. part of that movie. Yeah. Like, so like I don't know. I thought they did a good enough job with that one doing their own thing that it didn't feel like they were ripping or continuing right. or bastardizing what came before. Like, like it or dislike it, that's fine. But it was it was yeah. definitely its own thing. Yeah. And Chris Hemsworth was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I loved I loved Afterlife. So I'm going to check this one out. I just hope that uh, I mean, like I, I mentioned it to you, where the first Afterlife really felt like they leaned into it, put a lot of time, effort, energy, and love into that one, and it showed. This one felt like a corporate decision to just churn out like kind of like a par for the course, entertaining, fun movie, but it might not have that X factor. So it's kind yeah, of and you know thing. now Ghostbuster has its own production company, so it's like I'm sure we haven't seen the end of it, and it's going to be like every couple of years we're going to probably get a new one. So who has their own production? Ghostbusters. It's called Ghost Corp um, Productions. Oh wow! Do you remember that unauthorized Gotham 1918 hardback I got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The publisher was called giant panda king they've been working on a ghostbusters one for a couple of years now they take a long time to make as they're like real props real people mm -hmm. real photos and stuff but I'm, I'm looking forward to that it's called the last firehouse oh wow yeah i went and saw dune part two and said fetuses are creepy so is the baby <laughs> <laughs> i think that movie definitely i saw a review that pointed that out like dune definitely pointed out that that was uh that was a baby not a fetus it was talking to people it was sentient <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it most definitely was. It's even it's even more creepy after it's born, especially in the uh, the old 1980s version. That kid was scary. Eight out of ten for me, says Trev. That low of a budget would mean they'd have to use real ghosts <laughs> since special effects <laughs> would cost more. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. I made fart noises during her speech at the end of the movie, dude. Oh my god! <laughs> like like <laughs> like out loud. Was it that bad? <laughs> Was it like a Falcon Winter Soldier speech at the end? Needed more action. Bad guys should have shown halfway. Love the nods to the original. It felt like the kickoff to a blockbuster of old to me. The atmosphere was great. Oof, 2016 is the worst for me, but I understand why some people like it. Yeah, out of all of them, it's my least favorite one. Easily, but it was still enjoyable. Like, I love part one. I love part two. I love Afterlife. Mm. Thought the girl one like i said the only thing i thought it was fun mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the, he was the original director too. So the, the the last one, Afterlife, was dedicated to Hal Ramis, who's mm-hmm. Spengler and passed away. This one was dedicated to Ivan Reitman, whose son who directed the original and whose son Jason Reitman directed Afterlife and this one. That's pretty cool. At least they got the same director back. That's good. Yeah. So let's move over to like probably the the talk of the town this week is easily, easily, and it made the thumbnail for this X Men ninety seven. So th- one of the most beloved cartoons to ever exist. That stood the test of time. The fans have n- never let it die. One of the most iconic intros to a to a television show, not just an animated show. Mm-hmm. But uh, Disney decided that they're going to continue it, not remake it, but continue where it left off. Now, there most certainly is a time jump when we kick off this. I mean, at least at least a year, bare minimum, because Gene's already like uh, nine months pregnant, about to give right. birth when this show starts. But uh. They they absolutely, in my opinion, knocked this out of the park. Like this, these first it released two episodes, and for me, it was an absolute ten out of ten. Absolute ten out of ten in these first two episodes. Uh, I was blown away with uh, like I told Pops, it almost gave me a sense of uncanny valley. It we got the original theme music, but it was redone, so it, it's the same song, but you could tell it's a slightly different cut. Uh, you get the original opening, but they've added in morph to it, and now it's widescreen, not full screen. And then you have the same characters and the same designs, but they're slightly blockier and skinnier versus kind of like the 90s muscle bound look that things had. So, but it's still really, really close. And uh, we, we saw right out of the gate with the intro, most notably Cyclops. Mm-hmm. Do things that we've never seen Cyclops do before and utilize his eye beams in ways that I've never even thought about. Like he was dodging attacks by shooting the ground next to him to fly out of the way and stuff. And we saw him jump out of the Blackbird with no assistance, no parachute, no anything, and just missile down at the ground and just let loose to slow himself down and land. And it was amazing. We got Sentinels in the first episode and just an all out fight. It was, it was just dope and a great cliffhanger to the first episode with. With the presumed death of fan, uh, Professor X, Cyclops has taken on leading the team, assuming that he's in uh, charge of the manor. And Magneto shows up and shows us the will that Professor X left, leaving everything to Eric. So Eric is tasked with carrying Charles's legacy. Yeah, it was it was really good. I mean, it was um, I, I I didn't watch Eric being faithful to one woman. Um, um, I I. I, I didn't see a lot of the episodes when they you know the the original one but when that music hit even though it was redone it was like it kind of brings you right back to where you were um even though some of the you know even though it does look like 90s animation they still did some things with some of the animation that are that were more uh more current um than they would have done in the past like there was there's one quick scene where they show um cyclops face and they show the visor, and you can actually see, see the that. eyes yes. inside the visor, um, which they never would have done back then, you know, because it was yeah, all. I noticed, I noticed was, that thing too. I'm like, yo, there's yeah. one eye because he was at an angle. Yeah. I'm like, hey. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. It uh, it was really cool, and it left us. It got the sec- action pack second episode kind of hinted at Magneto and Rogue having a, a history, which kind of calls back to some comic stuff. Uh, Magneto, of course, is wearing that goofy outfit. That they stuck him in in the uh, in the was it like the late eighties very briefly, yeah. so we got to get him out of that costume asap. That's like someone saying like you know we're gonna do a Fantastic Four retro cartoon, give me the cleavage Sue Storm outfit. <laughs> but no, don't do that. But it's comic accurate. Well, yeah, it is, but that doesn't mean it was a good idea. That's Magneto's costume with the the weird arm length gloves and like wearing like a scarf almost. It's just a, it's just a bad costume. Like it's. Mm-hmm. Nothing redeemable about it. So I hope we get him out of that costume and into the classic one or the classic slash modern one. It's standard one, you know, like there's no way it's as comfortable as the robe, but still right. he looks like the clown. Mm-hmm. But um, we got Morph back as well. And they've uh, updated his look to reflect that of Exiles, where he looks like the guy, the bad guy from Harry Potter, which is dumb. <laughs> uh, whatevs. And then we got Bishop added to the team, which was freaking awesome because it was always a treat in the old one when you got characters like Bishop or Cable or all these other, so having him as a staple on the team, I thought was fantastic. Unfortunately, by the end of the second episode, we also had the uh, FOH, I forget what it stands for, but the, the dirt bags that are like, uh, Oh, no mutants. And they come in and make their attack on 
on the mutants and storm dives in front of a shot and gets hit to save Magneto. And it, you find out that it wasn't a bullet, but it was a weapon that took away her mutant ability. So that's where the second episode leaves us off is that, uh, Storm is depowered and somebody shows up at uh, the manor yeah. and it turns out to be what looks like another gene. So we have two genes. The friends of humanity is. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Cyclops can't help it. If he has a wandering eye. The, the, and going back, I mean, there were definitely some things that have, um, uh, you know, that were, I mean, if you, in the, in the first episode when they're all in the kitchen, whatever, and you know, um, uh, Gambit has wearing a crop top. Right? <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, it's like you know, top, yeah. That definitely is a '90s thing. Yeah, yeah. They definitely leaned into the era very well. So I was, I was ridiculously pleased with it. I'm always, always, always on my guard when it comes to Disney these days because uh, it's no secret they are like culturally, like real world, real life culturally left, and they put that heavily into their content. And whether you, whether you're left or right, like I just don't care for that. I don't care for real world hot button politic kind of stuff. I don't want stuff that people argue over on social media all day long to be in my entertainment. There's no reason for it. And the, this was devoid of that. And uh, that's how X-Men always was watching as a kid. Like you don't have to point out like this person's race or this person's sexuality or any of this. You just point out bigotry. And that's what Magneto did. He's like bigots. And like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for all of you. Like it's just a wide brush, all bigotry, right. every bit of it. No exceptions, you know. I'm like, dude, that, that was handled very well. Now, personally, I still think they're going to drop the ball on this. I absolutely, yeah. storytelling-wise, I think they're going to drop the ball completely. That's kind of been like the, the, like the pattern of the like the Disney Plus shows. Like, good start, nice intro, and then like the story just devolves. But what's unique about this show is it looks like with the episode lineup, they're telling like three episode story arc kind of things. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm hoping that there'll be like an underlining theme, but like, you know what I mean? Like you could compartmentalize episodes like we used to in the past to be continued, to be continued. Then it starts anew. So if it hits like a weird patch, you know, hopefully it'll just arc over it fast and get into like, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't want it to be bad, man. And yeah, I mean, and they, I mean, and we, we were talking about the first episode, but the second episode too had just a ton of stuff that happened in it. You know, the trial of Magneto, um, he basically, he agrees to go to the UN to be put on trial. Um, we have, you know, Jean Grey gives birth to, uh, Nathan, Nathan Charles Summers. Um, we have Storm who is, uh, shot with, um, uh, basically an, a, a, a souped up, um, uh, collar, uh, type of a, a machine that basically takes her powers. So she leaves the X-Men, um, but, uh, and then at the very end, we find there's a knock at the door, and who's there but another Jean Grey? Two jeans. Two jeans, yeah. And I um, think the toys kind of spoiled it that one of them's Madeline Pryor, if I'm right, not mistaken. Right. We got and a I, member and, milestone chat, 13 yeah. months strong nice. from Commiverse. Good evening, everyone. Hashtag We Are Legion. Appreciate that. And I, 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 I uh, laughed out loud when um, Gene went into labor and she said, he's here. <laughs> and Wolverine goes, who, Apocalypse? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they played Wolverine like the comic relief and it worked so well. Yeah. Just guys like he, like they didn't make him a joke. He was just, he's like serious track mind, like always right. ready to fight and it worked so well. What was some of your thoughts on some of the voice actors in this? Because I know some original voice actors returned for it. I don't have like the list yeah. of who or what. And uh, some were completely new voices. Um, I, I liked him for the most part. Um, uh, Storm didn't sound anything like Halle Berry, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, bummer. <laughs> um, uh, but overall, I think that they did pretty well. I mean, they, they got all the, you know, the, they got all the accents that you would expect from Rogue and from Gambit. And, um, um, I kind of thought that Wolverine could have had a, a like a deeper ras raspier voice than he did. Um, he's got the rasp down a little bit, but I didn't feel it was kind of like deep enough. And I felt like if I had to hear him, I felt that he would have a deeper voice. Um, but uh, Magneto is good. Uh, Cyclops was good. Jean Grey is good. Everyone else was, uh, um, I thought it was really good. So. Tony you say you're looking forward to seeing the Goblin Queen. I think that's is that the Madeline Pryor character or something? I, I don't I don't know. It seems like modern stuff to me at this mm -hmm. point. But uh, I hope I hope that the show as a whole steers away from modern stuff. Like a lot of the story that we just got from this was pulled from older stuff, like with the right. trial of Magneto and everything. And that's why it's good. That's right. why the MCU was good when they were pulling from older comics, and that's why this was good. So hopefully 
They continue pulling from older stuff. Steer clear of the new stuff. I did see that there was like, so I was pausing it along the way, looking for Easter eggs, like in the opening shot, uh, you know, Sunfire that was kidnapped. Like you could see his dad's company in the city. And then you see the newspaper blow by that says Hellfire Gala on it. And mm -hmm. there was a nod to Spider-Man on something in there, which I think we're supposed to expect a Spider-Man crossover later. So uh, there's Easter eggs galore in it. I just hope we steer clear of anything modern comics with this whatsoever. Because modern comic X-Men just does not reflect this show whatsoever at all. Right. Yeah. There was, there was talk of uh, Genosha, but no talk of Krak uh, Krakoa. So. Exactly. Yeah. Steer clear the modern stuff. Goblin Queen Mad is Madeline from Inferno in the 80s. There we go. I'm not familiar with the Inferno from the 80s. Is J-Man here? What is going yep. on, homie? How are you doing today? But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see where they take it. Uh, I hope they don't. I hope they do well with it. From what I understand, they've already have like two seasons written before they got rid of their showrunner, which uh, we still don't know why he got got the axe. There are a couple of reports that came out, uh, like generic stuff saying he was hard to work with and stuff like that. So who who knows? Who knows? Nobody's ever been fired from Disney for being hard to work with. I don't think. Lots of showrunners on blast this weekend. What is it? Did lots of showrunners on blast in the last couple of days. Between Nickelodeon and uh, Disney oh my and... god, <laughs> I had one set like yeah. we're not going to unpack that. Yeah, we are not going to unpack that. But HBO Max released a three part documentary called Quiet on Set. Four, four part, four part documentary called Quiet on Set. And the something kids of Hollywood or something like that, but it's spotlighting the. Uh, the meteoric rise of Nickelodeon's kid programming from like the late nineties into the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. It's, it's heartbreaking. And it covers the CD underbelly of kids television. Yes, it is absolutely heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you know, uh, Cat Williams did that interview that went viral on the Shannon Sharp show months back, like, right toward the beginning of the year. And he said on that show, all will be revealed in 2024. And he called a lot of people out specifically on that show. And it seems like since, since then, most certainly a lot of things mm. are coming to light. And these are definitely projects that are being worked on before he made that interview. So uh, I'm okay. So there's definitely a, uh, whether he knew some of these things were being made or just mm. if he just, intuition kind of thing a lot of people have different intuition than others but uh looks like 2024 2024 is going to be wild so we shall we shall see how the rest of the year plays out but yep absolutely your cat's awesome mm -hmm. you know uh, everyone was clowning on him when he uh said on that interview that he could run the whatever distance and in, in like four seconds mm -hmm. Everyone's like, ain't no way that guy's that fast. Uh, two weeks ago, we posted a video of him running it in 4.4 seconds or something. Like, just not even a, not even a half second slower than what he said he could do it. And everyone's like, holy crap! This like, so the dude the dude doesn't seem to be uh, too full of it. You know what I mean? Right. But we're definitely getting into JSA here, brother Don. Definitely good to see you tonight. What were some of the other things? So, uh, the X Men '97, huge, 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 excited to see where they go from here. Hope they hope they keep this high level of everything they did in that first one. Uh, Dune, yeah. Dune two, still Dune chugging two. away. Yep. At the box office, it's uh, since we were here last week and it was just at five hundred million. It's at five point seven four million now. And as far as a franchise goes, it's officially a one billion dollar franchise now. Nice. As a franchise, it has officially crossed that. That goal which i think is pretty interesting just kind of following these as they go the new beetlejuice trailer teaser trailer drop movie titled beetlejuice beetlejuice and it was just a teaser we saw uh winona ryder was in it jenna ortega is clearly the lead rolling into town goes into the house from the first movie the models are upstairs goes up there and wakes up beetlejuice and he pops up out of the table and simply says the juice is loose and we get a shot of michael keaton from it, it it's got me excited what, what are your thoughts on this one yeah, I mean, it was, um, it, it's tough because, I mean, when he started talking, you can definitely tell 
you know, he's got a much older voice than he had from the first one. Uh, but still, um, it was so good to see him. And um, I was reading today, I haven't had a chance to go back and rewatch the, the, the teaser trailer, but um, they say that the, that teaser trailer is so filled with Easter eggs, um, but everyone was kind of focused on when Beetlejuice appeared um, that, you know, they, a lot of people haven't actually um, mentioned a lot of the Easter eggs. So I got to go back and, um, and watch them. Um, I don't uh, think I noticed them either. I watched it one time a pop. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Alec Baldwin, and I can't think of the girl's name now that was in the first Gina one. Gina Davis. Gina Davis, yeah. Um, they're not back um, for this one, but um, but still, he had definitely, absolutely looking forward to it. Uh, uh, it's And it's written, it's written by um, the two guys who did Smallville, um, and it's written by three people. Um, Is that David Boyer? No, no. Um, uh, Miles Goff and something Malar. I can't think of the name of the game. And the guy who wrote um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Oh, thank God. Those three people uh, wrote it. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. We'll see how uh, that one Alfred plays. Goff and something Malar, I think, is what the. the Another big are. one. This is going to be a huge hit to uh, anybody that counter programs HBO Primetime. Uh, House of Dragon season two, uh, first teaser stuff dropped this past week. Uh, fantastic show over on HBO Max. Mm -hmm. As a reminder, HBO Max, you can watch things anytime you want. It's sitting there just waiting to be seen at your leisure. Mm -hmm. Yes. They show up, I believe, um, almost immediately after they run on the actual HBO network. Yeah, I, first. yeah I'm going to say uh, officially Mondays at 7 a.m. they're available for you to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Def, definitely, you're waiting not, for him. definitely not Sundays at eight. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> you wouldn't even want to do that. Don't go out there. Not in the world, but I'm committing to it. Yeah. We got a program, the Super Bowl HBO. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, this year Free Comic Book Day is also going to be on uh, May the fourth, which is the Star Wars Celebration Day. And part of the Star Wars Celebration, all nine of the films are going to be sent to theater. I don't know if it's going to be a wide release, select release, a Fandango or Fathom event kind of thing, or you got any details on that? Um, just that I saw the poster for The Phantom Menace uh, because it is the uh, is it the twentieth anniversary? This twenty fifth anniversary this year, I believe, nice. of the Phantom Menace. So they're having a re release of that um, as well. I saw the movie poster for it, but um, that was all that I saw. Yeah, I'm gonna have to dive into more news, especially as it gets closer. But it's officially announced. All nine movies of the uh, the saga. No Han Solo was on the list. No Rogue One was on the list. That's right. But, uh, remember, of the nine movies, six of them were actually good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, They should just not put the sequels out there and just put Rogue One in its place. Right. No, that would, I think you would do just fine by doing that. Oh, and uh, man, that's that's really all that uh, I had on this list for new stuff. There's a new Marvel game that I did that did catch my attention. What is it called? Marvel 1943. I saw like a uh, video game footage was being oh yeah. Around. Did you I see that? There was, I saw the um, like the quick. Uh, I saw the thumbnails for the. There was a Hail Hydra one that was uh, that I saw a thumbnail for, and there was a Captain America one or something, or an Avengers. Yeah, it's like Captain America 1943, and he's like rocking with Black Panther's dad, I believe. I think it's Sachaka. But they were they were showcasing like the face capture technology that they use in this, and like it looked like a like you know when you're playing a video game and it would go into like a movie mode between playing it. It's not like gameplay; it's like in between the gameplay. It yeah. looked like they were showing that footage, and like look how real this looks. I'm like. Yeah, the cutscenes typically always do, but everyone was going crazy in the uh, comment sections that I saw about it. Like, this is so real. Right. So uh, I'm wondering how it's going to play. It seems like a lot of these comic book video games tend to let a lot of people down. The new Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, let a lot of people mm -hmm. down. That Avengers game that they worked on for so long, I know a lot of people didn't enjoy that one, but hopefully this one will be a hit for people. Yep, um, and um, other news that they had for trailers was the Rebel Moon Two Part Two. Um, uh, yeah, let's Scar Giver came out. Yeah. Let, let's uh, talk about that one for a second. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one thing that I've done here recently on my YouTube is I reactivated the thumbs down button. 
So the thumbs down button is present on everybody's YouTube. When you go and you look at a video, you can see the number of people that have liked a video. But as far as the thumbs down button, you can press it, but it doesn't give you a number of how many people press it. They stopped doing that a couple of years ago. I have, I have redid mine where I can now see the number. And uh, the Acolyte trailer for Star Wars came out, which mm -hmm. that was the first trailer that I actually, after I set it back up, I found out how to do it. I saw the ratio and on the Disney official page, it had uh, like, uh, like a million views, something like that. And it had 1.5 thousand thumbs up and 453,000 thumbs down. Like it was, it was disliked into oblivion. I'm like, Oh my God, that is crazy. So I'm like, yo, I bet this rebel moon that the internet just trolls, it has to be terrible. So I went, went back over cause I can only see it on my computer. I can't do it on my phone. I went back over and looked at the rebel moon one. It had like th like 3 million something. It had like way more people watched it, the trailer to begin with. And it had a, like, the ratio is reversed, like so many thumbs up and so little thumbs down. I'm like, this, this doesn't make sense. Like everyone online is always like defending Star Wars, this and that, but then they're not liking it. And then Rebel Moon people are like trolling almost, and it's getting way more views on the trailer. The the ratio of thumbs up to down is insanely positive. But um, that was kind of kind of weird. But uh, yeah, it was. Um, one of the things is, uh, I'm not really convinced, this is set in the High Republic, which is between the Old Republic and the, the Rebel Age, so, um, uh, I'm not convinced that the High Republic has really caught on the way that they really want it to. I mean, I know they've been running, they've been doing it hard with comics and books and things like that, um, but I'm just not convinced necessarily that the, the High Republic has really caught on the way that they, that they thought. Yeah, I don't even know if that's, a, that trailer looked... I don't know, like knowing what we, because, you know, I like, kind of, I do a lot of the following of that company and everything. Like it's just an interesting company to follow. And it wasn't long ago that, that Kathleen Kennedy grandstanded that she got that, like uh, that feminist documentary maker and brought her over and said, we're going to, we're going to finally, the force is feminine. That's what star Wars needs now. Like, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, that trailer looked like, textbook what everyone complains about you know and marcus you're here right on time because that that trailer looked like a product of a culture war mm -hmm. it, it absolutely did like there wasn't one white male in it which people have been pointing out i'm like and then i had to go back and watch it again i'm like no well th there's actually not one white male in there so you know it just looks like one of those times like you know you're shooting yourself in the foot disney you know like the audience has caught on and whether it's good or bad they're like trolling it and thumbs downing it and trash talking it and like kind of like what happened with the X-Men. Like you got people trolling it before it releases and now we'll see how it plays out. But right now it's, it's proving everybody wrong. I wonder how many more people would have watched it. If you kind of would have held your story back till the show versus mm -hmm. putting it on front street. You know what I mean? Like right. give it to them as you're showing them how you're going to deliver the story. That way they can't just like, like cry foul. Like, you know, Right. If you deliver a good story, there's no arguing. It was a good story. But right. to me, it just looked like a cheap Matrix, female Matrix show, but set in Star Wars land. I think it even had Trinity in it. Oh, really? Carrie Ann Moss, yeah. Oh, she was yeah. Like, right, yeah. Yeah, she even does a little martial yeah. arts fight and hits her, and and the the Acolyte girl, she like blocks it and even slides back like Neo did when he was fighting, <laughs> like fighting Agent Smith. I'm like... Bro, are they ripping off the Matrix and making a Star Wars show? But we'll see how it plays out. I'm interested in this time era, that's for sure. I have not seen anything in this time era. As you know, I'm just I'm just a visual medium guy when it comes to Star Wars for the most part. I, I did get my Django Fett movie cover because Django is the GOAT. But uh, we'll see how it goes. What did you think of the... Uh, we started off by talking about the uh, Rebel Moon Part Rebel 2 Moon. Stargiver. Uh, that trailer had me so hyped. Mm -hmm. It looked awesome. It looked super sci-fi. That Zack Snyder style, I absolutely love. And when we saw Jimmy, which we talked about a lot, like wanting to see what he's up to and the way that they we left him with the the crown, the crown of horns and everything, mm -hmm. seeing him like going ham, I'm absolutely excited for it. So much so, I am 100% skipping it. And I'm having to remind myself that it's going to be hard as hell to do. 
but I refuse to watch half the movie just to spoil the story. We know that the full version of Rebel Moon is roughly eight hours and will release in a couple of months after the condensed version. Mm -hmm. Two four-hour films were condensed down to two two-hour films. If I watch this, I'm going to know who survives. I'm going to know how it ends. I'm going to know where the fight happened. Like, it's, going to, it's going to spoil it. I want, I want to watch it how it's supposed to be seen. So I'm going to skip this one. I'm skipping it. And I'm just going to watch the first it. one. I know. And I regret it. I regret it. For <laughs> Having seen the first one and can see the edits in it, just like with Batman V Superman, yeah. the theatrical cut, you can feel the harsh editing in it. But then when you watch the ultimate cut, it's only 20 more minutes. All the editing smooths out and you realize they took away all the context of everything happening outside of the fight scenes. So I like, that's how like looking back on rebel moon, I'm like, I had fun watching it. But I'm having massive regrets now, especially after that interview Zach did for two hours with Joe Rogan, where they like dove into all kinds of topics. They spent probably about 10 minutes on Rebel Moon. And he explained, like, in his words, like the, the movie that came out, that's 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 not my movie. Like, I'm, I'm that's my footage and everything. And it's PC. that's not my movie. It's nothing like that. And knowing how the Justice League versus the Snyder cut, like, bro, like. I'm not doing it. I don't, I don't want to ruin it. If I could have not seen justice league and only seen the Snyder cut, I would have, you know, like mm -hmm. we have that opportunity now, knowing what I know, I'm making a decision, skipping it till it, uh, like I might turn it on on the TV, like when I'm leaving for work so they can get a view out of me kind of thing, clock yeah. in my view, support Zach, give him another project. But, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it, and you know, I I understand what you're saying, but to me, I also want to uh, I want to watch the four hour one and then be able to compare it to the eight hour one and see, you know, the difference. Oh man, I I, I would probably I, I don't mind doing that either, but I think I would do it in reverse order for me. Watch the eight hour I mean, first and then watch the four hour one. Yeah, watch a condensed one next, because I I just don't want to ruin it, like because like you know we saw we saw Ray Porter's character die, like uh, the brother from the blood ax clan in the first one, we saw him die in that epic fashion, but we didn't get a lot of screen time with him knowing that there's two hours more of that movie. Think of how, how impactful that death could possibly be when we get the full cut. Like if we get a lot of footage of him and his sister, which I'm reading the, uh, the rebel moon comic, the prequel comic that focuses on this family. So I'm already getting more connected tissue between him and his sister and seeing the stuff that, they go through it like once the uh, the emperor dies and the the universe has gone into turmoil and everyone's on edge and all this stuff and it's just uh I don't know like if like we got the band together now if we if any of them die it won't mean you know what I'm saying like I don't I don't want to lose the the grandness of it kind of thing but I also don't want to wait <laughs> I don't want to exactly. wait at all. Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire was not. As good as Afterlife. Yeah, we touched on that a little bit earlier. I'm still going to check it out. I don't think I'm going to go uh, make it to the theater to see it. I know that Hefe got one of the Ghost Trap popcorn buckets. He got it, didn't get the popcorn in it, but it had the wheels on the bottom. It looked, uh, it looked legit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, did we even talk to Crow movie when they dropped the trailer a couple weeks ago? Um, I don't think we did. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not excited. Yeah. People crying it shouldn't be remade and it's less legacy in it. Lee's legacy. Yeah, there have been four movies and TV shows. I haven't uh, you know, I've heard some people say that. Most people I've seen just like, yo, like why why does if we're remaking it, why does it look like this? Like Edward Furlong like did a better crow than Bill Sarsgaard looks. So that doesn't mean he won't play out just fine. Uh, my thing is my biggest complaint was it doesn't feel goth, it just feels punky. And I oh yeah, we did kind of touch on it. I maybe we did. I think the Crow movies, TV show, anything you want to do shouldn't be grounded in this world. It should be grounded in its own world. And you shouldn't be beholden to our trends, our fashions, our this, our that. You should create your own gothic rock, whatever look for your movie. That way it can be timeless, you know, because the director wanted to, uh, he came out and was talking about how he wanted to talk to like the 20, 25 year old punk rockers of today. Kind of thing, hence like skinny jeans and mullet haircuts. So 
Uh, I think that's what's pushing some people off. It, it has potential, but it looks like one of those low budget European films. Like when you, yeah. you're an American company and you go to Europe to like Eastern Europe to film to save a bunch of money, like mm -hmm. Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. It looks like that to me. But I'm going to check it out. I, I love The Crow. I got to read this one. It says, much love, pimps and legends. Just found out I have to work an extra two hours early tomorrow because of a call off. So bedtime for me. Two hours early for Durs. That means he has to get up at the crack of 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Pencil me in next week for Godzilla talk, though. Nice. I will do that. I will do that. You're going to have to call in sick. Tell him you got diarrhea. No one argues with a person with an upset stomach. There you go. You're penciled in. Who wants the airs cut of Suicide Squad movie? Yeah, dude, I'm I'm against the grain on that. I would like it just to see it. I'm not fighting for it. I like it. I like the one we got. Only crow I care about is Sting. <laughs> yes. There we go. Penny Crow is Eric character, but touching on various crow comic stories, no white face paint, cross earring tattoos, etc. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. It has potential. I think I think the studio got super cold feet. They released that picture. I don't know who told them that picture was a good idea to release out of all the pictures from that movie. That's the one. But they, they saw how the internet reacted. So they're like, quick, cut a very revealing Red Band trailer, re-edit the trailer, and they gave you the entire movie in three minutes in chronological order, showing you the violent scenes and everything, like with the Red Band trailer. And the scene when he's walking up the stairs and like that, that grand ballroom or whatever it was, and everyone's just surrounding him on the balcony, popping him with shots. Like that looked pretty, yeah, pretty intense. Crow doesn't have to be Eric Draven. We know if there have been other people who were brought back, and that's the route they should have taken. Mm -hmm. Right there. You can do as many it's like the mask with Jim Carrey. Jamie Kennedy picked it up next, and it was just the mask traveled through the comics of different people. Yes, it was. Yeah, we touched on that earlier. 10 out of 10 for me right now. I have no faith that Disney's going to keep a 10 out of 10 through the whole thing, but God, I hope they prove me wrong. They they've they have not earned my trust. They've earned the loss of my trust. But uh, man, I sure hope they keep doing that, man. It, it felt so good to call my dad at 11 30 night pops. You know, I wasn't going to watch that show. <laughs> it's getting nothing but rave reviews from it literally everyone and i checked it out it's true it's fantastic watch it and then you call them right back Did you finish it oh my god i just watched episode one. Oh my god i'm like dude this is amazing it felt so good ever returns to work tuesday after nine weeks dude i'm so glad that you're getting to go back for those that don't know he had some surgery and stuff and he's just been cooling since then that means everything's good Nice. Hope everything stays good, brother. I hope you get out to see Godzilla X Kong New Empire this Thursday at the IMAX. Because if you do, you should see me there and then be here next Sunday because we're diving deep into the monster verse. Went to Indiana Comic Con yesterday and saw two things one, the most One Piece cosplays I've ever seen, and two, the most Godzilla merch I've ever seen. Dude, bigger than ever right now. Oscar winning actor Godzilla. Is just really just taking America by storm. Oh, but the best was um, you you pointed out the best was that that movie thing that you put that you posted with Godzilla and and Kong out in front of the movie theater. Oh, the, yeah, that's in Thailand, or yeah. AKA Thailand. Okay, yeah, dude, uh, Dustin uh, from Two Brothers Comics, comic book chiropractor, posted like. Bro, where's it at? Let's go get it. Because he's like, I got a truck. I'm like, I think shipping would be a little expensive. Yeah. To get that from Thailand. I'm just pointing out a character that is not beholden to one person. Right. Like the, the crow change. And that means that you get to change aesthetics, style, everything. Everything about it is you can make it up from scratch. It's a it's a freebie. The fact that they took Jim Carrey the mask and were able to later down the road say, Let's make a cheesy kids movie that's not for adult. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Doctor it, Who started that. Yeah, Doctor Who, same thing. There's a new Doctor Who trailer that just dropped with yep. the 57th Doctor or something. It's the first Black Doctor, I believe. Yep. They've done the first Woman Doctor already. Now we're doing the first Black Doctor, and uh, 
Yeah, it spawned out of the, uh, was it a Christmas three-part special they did or just a reunion special? They did three Christmas specials. He was in the last the last Christmas special. So that's where he like materializes or right. what right. is it called? Reincarnates? Re- regenerates. Although it was a little bit different this time, the regeneration was a little bit because the old doctor didn't actually die and become the new. It was, it, it's... It's 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 a timey wimey thing that you gotta. Yeah, they introduced the multiverse where it's not one linear path of doctors reincarnating, right? They right, inter- right. Yeah, they. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, a, a lot of people not happy with those specials that they they leaned in and solidified a retcon to the first doctor that's this little girl and La La Land. They introduced like the multiverse to stuff, making doctors no longer we're not on the twenty something doctor, we're on the infinite number doctor now, and. And interestingly enough, this is the first. This is a result of Disney getting involved in Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, Disney bought Doctor Who, and here we are. Multiverse of Doctor Who, and all the fans are mad. I, I went by the comic shop briefly today. It's uh, it's next to a, the grocery store I ran to, and I went in and picked up my Django Fett that I completely missed. Paul reminded me that it, it had come out, asked me if I got a copy. I went to go get one. And got lucky enough to get, didn't even know they did a movie photo cover, but got the last one. I'm, I'm just been staring at it. Absolutely love it. It's going up on the shelf next to my figure. But uh, I was talking to someone who's a big Star Wars fan while I was in there because he's picking this up. And he, he's a local that I've seen countless times. And he pointed out, like, you know, The Last Jedi came out, right? In 80 what? Well, the Last Jedi? No, it was 2000. And... No, not The Last Jedi. Uh, Return of the Jedi. Okay. So the first one was in the first one was in 77. It was 77, 80, and 83. So it was so it was in 80. Was uh, Return of the Um Return of the Jedi was 83. 83, okay. So from 83 to 1999, we had no Star Wars movies. Right. So just because of how hardcore the fan base was, you didn't need a new Star Wars movie. The franchise stayed alive, it stayed relevant. You had like one toy line, and then Timothy. Timothy Zahn. Timothy, Timothy Zahn Zahn started the books with the expanded right. universe. And that alone kept this franchise so alive and so healthy that so many years later, Lucas did the second trilogy. And then as soon as Disney gets it, they swerve from the fans. And like, like that, that, that just points out like how important it is to cater to your actual fan base because a fan base will keep your franchise alive even when you're not making stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that's really crazy that Disney's come in and right now where it's at right now has the MCU in a terrible spot. They destroyed star Wars. Now they're doing doctor who Indiana Jones, they dug him up just to, just to hit him with a shovel and bury him again. Like it's crazy how they just, they just can't get a franchise in a healthy spot. Cause the moment they got star Wars, it has nothing's been like universally loved except for rogue one. From episode, from episode, what was it, seven four? Just yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's almost like I mean the the for lack of a better term, the franchises that they have have been like Toy Story, have been um, maybe like uh, Frozen, which is you know the you know yeah. So it almost that, seems like the like the home the homegrown franchises they do well. They don't do well when they buy something else. So it's almost like they don't understand what makes the thing the other things that they have to buy franchises almost. Yeah. That, that's a good way to look at it because like their own their own original brand was was doing just fine like the disney original films and stuff and they bought pix what's it called pixar pixar yep. pixar they bought that right mm-hmm. i don't I, I don't know when they did or what was like the first pixar movie that wasn't right it was under disney i don't know right well because well they always released the pixar films so okay what, that makes sense but they didn't actually buy Pixar until further on. But they always released all the Pixar films. What is going on, Signature King? And that's a good point. Signature King. That was a huge announcement from this week. Uh, uh, JSA. That's the Signature Authentication Service. The, apparently the number one Signature Authentication Service in the game, most notably. I think they're used for sports memorabilia, yeah. memorabilia over other stuff, right? I think so, yeah. CGC and them are now in bed together or CGC bought them or they're under the same ownership or something. CGC is getting ready to authenticate signatures, which is huge. That's a big deal. You know, a lot of people go to uh, conventions, get stuff signed all the time. And if you wanted to get anything 
properly graded and slabbed in a respectable case and pre presenting wise, you would have to go through one revenue, uh, one outlet called CBCS, which is not the industry's favorite, like the, uh, and now CGC is doing it. Yep. Let's see what Beard has said. I don't disagree on Star Wars, but I would push back and say Mandalorian was universally loved. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. You know, Mandalorian season one and two. It wasn't until the success right. of two that Kathleen Kennedy stepped in and demanded that Jon Favreau and them do Boba Fett next and wedge that show into their timeline, thus messing up what they had already written beyond that. That's why Boba Fett was so bad. It was a rush into production demand by Kathleen Kennedy. It's so weird. She she wants to be relevant so bad. So bad. Zahn. I always thought the Timothy Zahn Thrawn trilogy should have been episode seven through nine. Yeah, it seems like a layup, doesn't it? Like Luke, his kids. Like it's just the natural progression of what comes next. It makes no sense that it didn't. I always wanted to see a live action Dash Rendar ever since the Shadows of the Empire video game on Nintendo 64. That was such a cool character design. Yes, Pixar was actually looking at distributing their film through somebody else at one point, and then Disney just ended up buying them instead. Signature King says, we'll see, and I'm going to take his word for it, because with a name like Signature King, you, sir, or ma'am, know better than me. I've got plenty of stuff signed, but dude, uh, I got that uh, King Size Hulk signed by Steranko, Last year at Heroes and Spy Man signed before that. And I've, they've just been sitting behind me, of course, in reaching distance. But I've been wanting to get those slabbed up. But I, I think I'm going to use that to trial run, to test run the uh, CGC one when they get it rock and roll. And I still want to do some through CBCS because I love their new labels. And I'm not a I'm not a slab, slab snob. I've got all of them. I've got a PGX signed Jim Lee book and old CBCS labels, old CGC labels. I want to get one of the new CBCS labels in my collection. You even have yourself slabbed. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Toy Story was the first Pixar. Pixar. I don't know why yes. I can't say that tonight. Pixar Disney release, I think. Yep. Dash Rendar would be cool. I think that would, man, that was like, they missed out on that one. Dash, he and Mara Jade were just, just uh, disappeared by Disney. Yeah. They should, man. I don't, I don't even know the, how they can save the Star Wars stuff at this point. Because, like, you have to get the fans back. You know what I mean? Right. Like, the people that they're playing to, the people that show up to their events, don't go out and buy tickets. They don't They don't subscribe to Disney Plus. They don't do it. Whoever it is they think they're, they're playing this for are not watching. You got to get the people back. You know what I mean? Dude, I don't know. Ahsoka was pretty cool, but... It was so new and like only like built off of rebels that like I think like the quality of it was missed by the people that the people you need to get didn't didn't watch it I don't think but I I, I thoroughly enjoyed Ahsoka but it wasn't universally praised I think a lot of people just I don't know man I heard someone describe Star Wars like when they bought it they thought they had hundreds of characters they now can make content out of when in reality you got like just a handful of characters out of these hundred that people actually want to see or will pay to see. And what are you going to do with those characters? Yeah. And, and you know what? And I think it was a huge mistake for them to say, you know what? I mean, I guess I kind of understand why they did it, but it was kind of, you know, on day one, they buy star Wars on day two. They say, Oh, by, by the way, everything that, that hasn't been a movie or a TV series of star Wars didn't really happen. <laughs> We're just going to put it under legends and it's going to be like, it never really happened. Yeah, they should have went the other way with that. Yeah. <laughs> Anything we make doesn't happen. Ignore it. Yeah, yeah the 90s Dark Horse comic books. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I have over 500 wow. signed books and over 1,000 signatures. Nice. I'm not opposed to JSA. I just need to see some improvements before I let them in my signature kingdom. That's super fair. And I think that was something that kept CGC a little more prestigious, that like they have to be witnessed. You have to send it in or you have to go somewhere. I know that there's a large amount of people that don't have access to that, but I mean, this sounds a little gatekeeper-ish, but that not everything is for everyone. That's just life. You know what I mean? There's plenty of things out there. Like I'd like to be the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, but no, you would, nobody believes that more. I don't qualify. <laughs> well, I really would because Brett Favre was really cool. He was the quarterback during NFL blitz on the Nintendo 64. I, I told you about the Guinness book of world records thing, but I remember that. 
Because yeah. that pops got me the Guinness Book of World Records 2000 edition when they went from like the digest size real thick to the actual hardback with the pictures of full colors. Yeah. Well, the fourth grade, I remember that like it was yesterday. But that's just a good example. Like I, like I can't be a quarterback of the NFL. It just some people can't get yellow label CGC slabs unless you buy it already done. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's just the way it is. Not anymore though. I'm going to be interested to see what they do with the labels, much like CBCS. They used to have a red label and a yellow label and a blue label, and they reduce it down to just blue and yellow. If you get something witness signed, it says witness. If it was authenticated by the company, it's still yellow, but just says authenticated. I wonder what CGC is going to do. They have to keep it yellow. Otherwise, they're just think. they're they're starting a step below their competitor after this. Yeah. Local and they're, and they're company, saying, yeah, you know what? Your signature is great, but ours that we've actually seen are better. If they give it a different color. Yeah. That would be cool if they have like some kind of like, I don't know, like they do some, if they keep the yellow label. I mean, there'll be a, there'll be, have to be a transition period, but if they keep the yellow label and do like something more extravagant for the witnessed ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you do something with a, with like the, how they have the foil sticker on the side that says CDC, do something with the grading box to that just lets you know just from the sticker of the grade itself that it was witnessed. Like if it's a, a black outline versus a, a white outline or a, a, a shiny outline to kind of balance the shiny logo that they have in the corner just something yeah i mean they could <laughs> packers unsub yeah i don't yeah. i don't sports ball my dude that's, that's if you go i'm nfl blitz that's the only football game i played and no, the packers were on the uh, nintendo cartridge for that i i remember them from that can't reach the top shelf at walmart we all have limits that, yeah <laughs> Yeah, I know you got a lot of G.I. Joe stuff signed, yeah. I wonder the price point, too, because, like, uh, I've talked to Jeff here about, like, one of his G.I. Joe books signed. I think he has, like, I can't remember exactly, but it was between four and eight signatures. And he was just looking at the cost, like, like having to, like, you have to plan to get that graded because those those signature verifications build up really fast at uh, CBCS. Authenticating for $10. We're not for comics, though, right? You couldn't get them slabbed or anything. Got a Fate 68 book over there. It's not signed though. Greg Bo probably is in their uh, system. For sure. What else we got uh, news wise? Uh, first uh, trailer for the Penguin series. Holy crap, that looked intense. That looked <laughs> really good. You got a timestamp for when that movie takes place? Is Are we getting. Is this like the direct follow up to the Batman? Is this. Like- yeah, supposedly it's supposed to. I mean. From what I've read, anyway, like the the first couple episodes, anyway, the the city of Gotham is still flooded. So oh, nice! It's supposed to happen like almost immediately after um, the first movie. I hope we get a little bit of like flashbacks as well along the way, just a, just of Oz. I love the way this trailer was structured as well, with him kind of like casually sitting comfortably in that chair and just kind of giving that talk about the old like OG gangster, like and how. He, you can tell how he idolized him and just how the whole neighborhood looked up to him. And when he died, they threw him a parade and to be remembered that way. And it, it looked intense. Matt Reeves vision of Gotham just really fits my mind's eye of how I picture Gotham. The only thing it's missing are the blimps with the spotlights. That, that's a good <laughs> Five writer artists on the 40th anniversary issue of issue 21. Yeah, the silent issue. There it is. G.I. Joe yeah. trades have become insanely expensive. $100 for one. Holy crap. Wow. I wonder how much the Energon universe has to do with that, with uh, Skybound releasing those fantastic G.I. Joe books. Yeah, Tony Penguin Soprano. Penguin. That's how they need to play it. That is absolutely how they need to play it. And to the point of the Penguin, man, like, uh, you know, that current Penguin series is running at DC Comics that Tom King is writing. That has absolutely opened my eyes to how formidable that guy is. You know, he's always been such a joke kind of character, like three foot five shaped like a beach ball. And uh, like, he's just not threatening at all. There's nothing threatening about that character other than his gimmicks and his, his toys pretty much. Mm-hmm. That Tom King stuff that he's done has really shed a new light on how like, how evil, how sadistic, how methodical and how smart he is to really like, position him in a point to be an equal opposite for Batman in his own right. And uh, I think they can play Colin Farrell's version of the penguin, right. To do the same thing. Yeah. 
Ooh. Ooh. Being back at work is going to miss Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> I didn't even know they were. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of common sense that they've been doing them right. The one in 25 for those. I haven't been, I haven't watched for any of those. I think I got, uh, I did the ratio for number one of Transformers, maybe. I don't, I don't remember. I've just been getting the A covers. I've been loving every issue so far. Cobra Commander is definitely the weakest of the three. Duke is this little action pack Cobra Commander. Like all of them are good. But uh, Transformer has been my favorite, then Duke, then Cobra Commander. I want to know the story behind his facial scars and see them bring in Ventriloquist or other gangster bot. Yeah, that's a great thing that they could do right there. Like talking about how Matt Reeves is only wanting to keep this like super grounded and not really get into metas, like the heroes, right. people with special abilities. The Ventriloquist and the way that we saw him portrayed him. God, what was that recent book? Remember when the, he went in there into the Flamingos bar and was like oh, yeah. killing people? Like, like, dude, that that's that's a twisted character if you want to try to portray that in reality. Super twisted. A Mad Hatter would be a good one, too, that you can easily do a twisted, yep. real-life version of. Yep. But yeah, I'd like to see how he got those scars as well. That would probably be a good story. But it would also be kind of repetitive, too, right? Yep. I want to know how I got these scars. Black and orange blasting. I don't know if... Uh, Paul, if you're still watching, have you been getting those or something? I, I, I can only assume that somebody's already got dibs on them if he is getting them. There's no way he's not getting one in 25s of those books. They're wildly popular. But typically people already have have dibs on them or have them added to their pool. Like with the Godzilla Kong, I I was the first one to get dibs on that like long before. So the one in 25s I, I get for that one. Every shop does ratio differently. Some of them just throw them on the floor when the doors open and let people fight for them. Some of them you know, high price them in the case. See who's willing to pay yeah. for them. Some of them treats them like a pool box. You know, the first one to put dibs on them. Uh, you should check, check. What's the name of that place? The, the, that you use for the I bidding awards on them. Atomic empire. Atomic empire. If you can't find them to check, check that shop out. They have a really unique way of uh, selling ratios. Yeah. Uh, basically you can go out um, and you can, you can bid on them and they have a, a minimum price that, that you have to, because obviously, you know, they have to pay cause they have to buy. If someone wants a one in 100, you know, they have to make sure that they, that they can actually afford a one in 100. So um, they, they, they have a minimum price, but you can bid on them in the higher you bid. And then they, when they make their actual order, they, um, they go ahead and they uh, give it to the highest bidder. And they usually they can, they tell you, Almost like a month in advance, whether or not you're confirmed to get one or not, too. So yeah, that's pretty dope. He's talking about uh, uh, Duke and Cobra Commander, the one in twenty five. Which I'm mm -hmm. dude. I know GI Joe stuff is wildly popular at ABX. I don't. Know. I would only assume that somebody's already got dibs on those, but he's he's checking. And there's, it only goes up to issue six for both of those. There's a six-issue miniseries, and we've got, uh, I think, three issues of both of them out. So it's already halfway halfway through, and they've already announced the next series is going to be Scarlet and Destro. I'm really excited for the Destro one. I've always liked the Mars industry stuff. and Something about that, that Chrome Dome. It's just super cool. Yep. Super cool. But, yeah. Last thing, Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire's movie suits, the red suit and the black suit, both separately sold for over $100,000 a piece this week. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty pretty epic. Um, they also Still announced that uh, uh, Jimmy Olsen is coming to season four of uh, Superman and Lois. Yeah, they had they, uh, a lot of people not returning, and they're adding Jimmy Olsen in for a small season, which... In my mind, as long as they finish what we just left off at, we should right. be fine. <laughs> right. oh my God. What is going on? we got a 12-month member milestone. The Rat Pack made a full year in the Legion. Well, thank you so much. Big shout-out to the Rat Pack. Izzyverse NYC himself, fantastic channel member. He goes live on Monday nights if you're into comic book speculation and just kind of seeing what's going on with the comic charts. He uh, he touches on that stuff, does just a great guy, and he's a fantastic artist too. If you uh, want any commissions or stuff like that, he has gotten himself certified with CGC as well, so you can even have it slabbed in a yellow witnessed label as well. Superman and Lois is going to keep going. I thought CW killed off superheroes. Uh, this is the final CW DC thing for we don't know how long. 
Yeah. But yeah, it's got one more season. So, and the other season. thing you said is, is it probably will not show up until at least the fall. The CW, the president of CW said that they felt that it would be a waste to put Superman and Lois on during the summer when their viewers are, are least. So they're going to hold it probably until the fall. Mm -hmm. CW stated they canceled and are stopping all U.S. made written series. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Superman and Lois season four is, uh, I think it's filming right now, isn't it? Or are yep. they done? Yeah, it's yep. filming right now. But uh, yeah, they they were nice enough to finish that off before they uh, before they threw in the towel. But again, it's not a full series. They uh, Lois's dad is not returning. There's there's tons of characters not returning that were series regulars for this final season. Whatever they're doing, if you watch through season three, you know that at least the first couple episodes are going to be tied up, wrapping that up, and then the rest of it is going to be hyper focused on this wicked, wicked Lex Luthor that we were introduced to, played by the same actor who played Abraham in The Walking Dead. So you primarily have Superman, Lois, Jonathan, and uh, Jordan, Lex. They're bringing Jimmy in. So I guess we're going back to Metropolis to finish it off. We spent the majority of the show in Smallville and visited Metropolis, like when you need to stab somebody onto a building, it's a good place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really getting into spoilers because you should <laughs> definitely watch at least season three, but uh, yeah, it's, it is amazing. We get new actors for the super sons again. Nope. The returning actors from season three are returning for the finale. All right. New seasons, new sons. Nope. Nope. All right. You want to get into some comic books? It was a massively huge sure. week. So I'll go ahead and show you uh, which ones I haven't read and let you hit these. So I haven't read Cobra Commander yet. You, these come in the mail for you, right? Yep. So that one I'll have to roll over to next week. War Journal. Did you read that one yet? I did not. It is on I my haven't got there yet read. either. This was a massive week. I wasn't able to get through all of it. Wolverine Madripoor Knights is a Marvel retro miniseries title. I picked up the first one. And uh, I want to drop this, to be honest with you. It's just not doing it for me. Uh, didn't even, I'm like, not even excited about reading it. I should have dropped it sooner at one, but I'll end up putting issue one and two up on Pops Attic for uh, for the low low. Rebel Moon House of Blood Axe issue number three dropped. Have not had a chance to read it yet, but the first two I really enjoyed. And shockingly enough, I did not read World's Finest yet. Oh, it is. Uh, there's going to be. Uh, it's there's two stories in it. The the first one is the main story, and then the second one though is the one that's really kind of the one um, that's more important to the series. There's a there's a huge thing going on in the fifth dimension uh, where basically um, all the, you know, imps are being killed. And it's like, and so that was the second part. It was like a short story in the back that Dan Mora did. That's going to continue for the next couple issues. Um, so. Um, yes. The, the we'll invasion of apocalypse, right? Apocalypse is invading. Right. Yep. Yep. How was the meeting, the first meeting of Lex and the Joker now of, of an annual ago, they used the annual to highlight, their version of the first time Superman and Batman met up and they used this oversized 25th issue to do the same thing, but with their nemesis, they wanted to do the first meeting of the Joker and Lex. Correct. Correct. It was, um, it was good. Uh, the, I mean, it was kind of funny where, um, um, I, I kind of really felt for the most part that the Joker really kind of got the better of Lex Luthor. Um, the, I, but, um, you know, there it's, it's set, um, kind of the eight Lex Luthor has his uh, purple and green costume with the uh, with the like the, the X belt in front that has the uh, um, the bullet or whatever on it. So um, it, it was it, it wasn't my favorite story that I read in World's Finest, um, but um, it was still it was still pretty good. Serviceable. I got to tell you, the cover is yeah. amazing the way that they did it with Lex in the cape of Superman and Joker in the cape of Batman. Yeah, like that's. That was just such a great little design there. Yeah, Dan Moore is Dan Moore is a god. Right, another one I'm pulling, but I'm waiting to read. I have Dune House Carino, brand new series focusing on one of the other great houses in the Dune movie universe. I have House Harkonnen that I picked up the hardback of, as well as volumes one, two, and three of Atreides. I want to read those before I read these, so I'm going to be collecting these before I dive into them, because I want to read them in the order they were released. But uh, I, I'm excited to dive further into the Dune universe now that I've seen Dune Part 2. I'm no longer afraid to spoil stuff. So we'll see where that goes to. Just saw the big toy store has a long box hero Rocketeer figure coming out. I know Mark and Pops are into the character. Yeah, Rocketeer is fantastic. It's one of my, probably my favorite Joe Johnston movie by far. 
All right, let's find some books we both read, Paul. Oh. <laughs> Did it. Nailed it. Wonder Woman issue number seven by Tom King, cover by Daniel Sampier, but it was a break issue. Uh, we kind of called this one. I uh, wonder if it's going to be a layover issue. It was art by somebody March. So the art is definitely a step down, but this was a fun issue. It highlighted uh, Superman and Wonder Woman going off into uh, space to kind of spend the day trying to find something for Batman, for Bruce, for his birthday, because uh, despite the fact that them being who they are, like these, these deities in this world and the responsibilities they have, the little things do matter. And it's pretty much a day in the life of these two lifelong friends trying to figure out the perfect thing to get for Bruce. And they go to this cosmic mall. It's, it kind of reminded me of Valyrian, like the, the world of a thousand planets kind of thing. And uh, there was a lot of humor in this one, a lot of trying to figure out what Bruce would want, just a little bit of action in there. It was just kind of a feel-good issue, mm -hmm. and it highlighted some strong points of both of the characters along the way. And they uh, ultimately ended up deciding uh, present-wise to give Batman – uh, a picture from a photo booth because what, what do you get the guy that has everything and they kind of went through a list all through the all through the issue like maybe this well this is why he wouldn't want it maybe this right. and they ended up just doing a photo booth shot and they they made a joke early on in the issue like what if i just squeeze some coal and make a diamond and they threw that in there right. just just for craps and giggles and they they left the diamond and the photos in the bat cave and the next scene you see batman pulling off from an orphanage where he left the diamond and on the dashboard of the batmobile is the photo strip. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Tom, I mean, and I said this before with other, with other um, comics, but there are sometimes there are just like one or two lines that appear in a comic that make the entire comic worth it. Um, and really kind of capture who the, who the character is. And in this one, it's on the very first page. It's wonder woman talking to Superman. And he, and she says to him, um, you see what is best. Um, Bruce sees what is worst. But I see things as they are, um, which is to, which nails all three characters. Um, it was intense. And it was just one of those like subtle yet eye opening moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom King is crushing this series. I still stand by the fact that this is easily in the top three best books that is releasing right now from any publisher in any format. Uh, he, he's elevated his own work with this one. It's uh, the best way I describe it, and I keep using this way because Wonder Woman is not nearly my favorite character, but this book is absolutely uh, one of the best on shelves. Can't wait for issue eight when we dive back into what's going on. This issue, I believe the editor's note said, takes place after Wonder Woman issue three, mm -hmm. if you were to read them in chronological order. Right. Right, so it takes place before she actually goes and has her her little contest with all of her all of her friends. What do you got next? Uh, or we can do the other one that you that you brought up. Although Superman. This, yeah, although this also I, I love the. Uh, the Dan Jurgens rapper on cover. I didn't see that one. Hold on. Dan Jurgens will be at Heroes Con. Holy crap! I didn't even see that. Yeah. Yep. So, what do you think? This was kind of like the uh, this was a uh, the final issue of this story arc. Yeah, because uh, everything you know leads right into the the end of the story. It leads right into the House of Brainiac. Um, and the Brainiac Queen uh, coming, uh, but this is um, basically the end of uh, um, they they finally defeat um, the Lex Luthor Revenge Squad. Um, but uh, we find out um, who it was that reactivated all the Lex Luthor Revenge Squad, and it turns out that it was the um, the Brainiac Queen or Queen Brainiac. Yeah, know. we see the Brainiac ship hurling toward Earth. But what we get in this issue is a pretty pretty cool fight. Superman's kind of poisoned from his fight against a revenge squad. Dr. Farm and Graf are pretty much knocked out from the events of the last issue. But we have Letitia Luther, Lex's mom, in a battle suit about to try to wage war to get her revenge on her kid. I, can, I brought you into this world. I can take you out kind of mentality. And she's uh, 
she's about to do her thing and Superman's not able to fight her. So Lex shows up and just decks Dr. Farm wearing his, his battle armor, his blue suit with the Superman S from Rebirth and stuff. And he flies out there to intervene his mom. We get a cool scene with Superman getting to science some stuff, showcasing his super intellect, having to reverse engineer some of this souped up kryptonite while Lex is trying to keep his mom from destroying stuff and hurting people, figure out how to do it. They, they shut down the kryptonite effect that's happening on the city, and then they remotely shut down both power suits and ending the battle. At the end of it, Lex is, uh, Superman is talking to Lois about getting some downtime, this and that, and you see you see some kind of containment getting hit. And Superman's talking to Lois about, I wonder what it is that made them all want to come out of hiding and attack Lex now. What was it about right now that was the big thing? And uh, the containment keeps getting hit. It keeps cutting back and forth. And who pops out? The main fragging man himself, Lobo, pops out. And he, he's on the scene. We don't know why or for what purpose. We do know that Brainiac, through the little teases we've got, has an army of Zarnians that we don't right. know where he's not, that he's taking planet to planet instead of bottling a city. He's allowing his generals of just savage Zarnians to wipe them out. He even has doomsday hounds. Like, we, like what he's got going on, we don't know. But that ship... With those Zarnians, those hounds, and Brainiac is on the way, and that's what triggered the response, apparently, from the Revenge Squad. A lot of stuff is happening. It's all building to this, and most importantly, House of Brainiac will be our Superman story lead-in to absolute power this summer. The big, massive event where Amanda Waller's plan unfolds, and that kind of segues us right into our next book tonight, Titans Issue 9. <laughs> That was smooth. That was smooth. Yeah, it was, man. This was actually my favorite issue that they've done in a while outside of the Beast World stuff. It kicks off with the Quintessent. For those that don't know, that is the cosmic deities of the DC Universe. High Father, Hera, uh, the Phantom Stranger. The Spectre was there talking with them about what to do about the upcoming calamity. And you know, they're like, we can't directly intervene. We got to do something. And Hera's like, I, I have somebody I can talk to on the low low. But what was so important about this, when you're looking at all the character names like the Wizard, Phantom Stranger, High Father Hera, next to the Spectre, it said Herald of the Quintessent. That's not what he is. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, starting with this issue, I don't know if it's a DC thing or if it's a Tom Taylor thing, they're retconning the Spectre. Yeah, he's not he, was the always, he was always the Wrath of God. He's yeah, he's the literal wrath of God. He's not the herald of the quintessent. He's part of the quintessent. He's right. a member of the quintessent. So I think they're trying to, and this sounds terrible, but it it this is it is it looks like they're trying to remove the God aspect out of the specter and make him a herald of the quintessent. Because not it was three years ago before the Justice League wrapped up with the death of the Justice League. They did a couple of like three issue off stories. They did one where Jim Corrigan got re-tethered to the Spectre, where the Spectre was running wild without a host. And Batman made the statement to the team explaining to him, like, that is the wrath of God. And they said, God, he goes, yes, the one with the capital G. Like actually like calling it out, like we have gods, we have monsters, we have deities, we have multiverses. That entity is a, is a part of that book right there. Like it's always been that and it's always worked just fine. So I think that that's a, like DC. If you ever hear this, that's a total bitch move. If that's what y'all are doing, he is the wrath of capital G God. And if y'all backpedal that or retcon that y'all are POSs for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I mean, with the quintessence, the, the, the fifth member of the quintessence, if you take the specter out is Ganthet. And I'm like, what is he doing there? Yeah, we got one. Of, he well, he's been there like for a long time now, right? At least ever, at least in modern times, as early as what was it? In, Justice League Incarnate story that they did. Right. They did the Infinite Frontier six issue mini series at the start of Infinite Frontier that led into Justice League Incarnate, and that's that had Ganthet in there as well because that's when Darkseid was like poisoning the power battery and Black Adam right. got poisoned and kind of bled into the Christopher Priest story, but. 
Poor POS, poor old storyteller. There you go. Y'all are poor old storytellers. Can't have any Christian concepts and modern stuff. Yeah, which it does. It does feel like that sometimes. Like they try to shy away from it because so many people are like offended by it. But I mean, you see other religious concepts and stuff. Like, well, to be fair, like what was the last time we seen Simon Baz? Like he's an right. openly Muslim character that's on the Green Lantern team. Like, has he even popped back up yet? Has has Jeremy Adams brought him back in yet? Not that he's, I know of. I haven't seen yeah. him anywhere. He's rolling people in. I've got his first appearances over here. I'm waiting on that character to pop again. I'm not <laughs> sell him so I can just yeah. Right. yeah, he was always a cool one. I like the full face mask. I like the didn't believe in himself enough and he still had to have his gun as a safety blanket and stuff. I remember when they tried that with Shazam giving the acronym some made up beings. They moved away from the Greek. Yeah, they have Greek gods in it. For God's sake, the same book. Yeah, had a was it Hermes? Yeah, yep. And yeah, they, same book has Hermes in it. And I, I mean, I, he may be referring to um, the new ones, the new gods that are supposedly powering Mary Marvel. Because remember, the, she's yeah, not powered by the like, same gods that Captain Marvel is anymore. Yeah, she's powered by a set of all female gods based right. off of Themyscira. Right. Yeah, Miss Marvel is Muslim. Yeah, Solomon. Oh, he's talking about Captain Marvel. Yeah, Solomon. Solomon was Solomon never a Greek. Never god. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny you have all the Greek gods, then you have Solomon of the Christian Bible. <laughs> yeah, that was a little oversight on their part, I guess. No biggie. No biggie. It works. They just needed you know, someone was smart. That, and you know what's cool is that's the one that's gone haywire for him too. Remember, right. that's the one in modern times that it isn't working right. Yep, exactly. Well, but now he has a now he has a souped up version of Solomon in his head. Mm -hmm. You know what's sad for uh for April third, Shazam did not make my top ten list. That's, that's kind of a bummer, yeah. but that's let you know how much good stuff is coming. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as the book goes, we start out with the quintessent meeting, then we cut over to the Teen Titans. It picks up right where we left off with them like stopping a flooded city and everything. With the big remembering the remembrance from that was that. People are afraid of Beast Boy after the events of Beast World. He had to go back to Titan Tower. He wasn't even able to stay for the cleanup. So they clean up and everything. And you see uh, Trigon convening with his son, questioning his motives with trusting Raven to uh, get the Titans under her control because she is she is a god in her own right and can just make them under her control. But uh, as we know, Raven is trapped inside of her own stone and her evil half is in control and is uh, working to... What, what do they say? The the demon winged angel or something like that, whatever they called the her dark, is coming. The dark winged queen. The dark winged queen is coming, which reminds me of future state stuff. Like, I hope we're finally getting back to that. That, that premonition still hasn't happened three years later. Let's do it. But, uh, so we kind of see like the deceit, her like moving and shaking in the house, trying to position the team against each other and stuff like that. And there's even a moment when, uh, they're, uh, Responding to a call, Donna Tori is running out, and Hermes pulls up next to her. He's like, "Hey, I'm I'm moving really fast, so no one but you can see me." And Wally walks in. Oh, hey, Hermes! <laughs> like, yeah. like what, a, what an awesome moment! Yeah, that, that was a great moment. But then, uh, they they uh, Raven just pops up out of left field. Looks like she killed him or imprisoned him in the stones. Like, oh, that wasn't really Hermes. That was a demon sent by my dad. And Donna Tori's like, "Oh my God, why would he do that?" I don't know. Oh, good yeah. thing. Thanks for getting him. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? But anyways, the big important part of the issue above all else was Trigon met with Amanda Waller, made a deal with the devil, offered her the presidency. She said no, offered her uh, bigger stakes, and she said uh, she'll, she'll help keep Raven in check kind of thing. So Amanda Waller and her big ultimate play to uh, take out all the heroes on planet Earth is working with Trigon, and he tries to tough talk Amanda Waller. He tries to threaten Amanda Waller. The an actual devil of his own hell threatens Amanda Waller in her office, and she responds by saying, "You don't think I have contingencies for you too?" And he said, "You couldn't." She said, "Reach your hand over my desk and see how it works out for you." I'm like, "Yo, <laughs> yo, it was the, it was the toughest moment in comics this week." When Amanda Waller casually dared the devil to reach over her desk, and he was scared right. to. I'm like, gosh. 
Yeah, and um, you know, he offers her the presidency, and she's like, "I don't want just the appearance of power. I want real power." Real power. <laughs> it was a, it was a solid issue. I was I'm happy for it. I've been saying I want to drop this title, but uh, seeing Amanda Waller on the cover, this wasn't going to be the issue. If I do, I'm clearly going to have to ride out all these titles through through absolute power. Too much is going on. Uh, so much of it matters. It's all connected. The continuity at DC is extremely tight right now, and it's really just building up to such a great event. I can't wait for this absolute power to kick off. Uh, side note announcement. I got three of these beautiful John Jang Invincible Iron Man 16 variants. This is his first Iron Man cover that he's done since he's been doing direct covers, and he got the, the approval from Marvel to rock. He did do a big time collectibles exclusive on Marvel Voices Wakanda that featured Iron Man in the cover as it was an homage to Ultimate Fallout 4. But this is the first full on Iron Man that he's done, not just the helmet. So I got three because I'm keeping one for me and I'm going to throw one in this month's Legion Loop giveaway. So one lucky channel member will be winning that. And then the other one will get given away at a later date. Nice. So, yeah. Good on that. Last book I got. How many you got left? Uh, just one. Save the best for last. Justice Society of America, number nine. Jeff Johns, uh, Mikkel, is it Mikkel Janin? Mikkel Janin, yeah, I believe, yep. Mikkel Janin. What, what were your thoughts? Give me the thoughts. I'm going to start pulling up this uh, StreamYard giveaway tool. And while he's talking, everybody, go and start dropping hashtag we are Legion in the chat. We're going to be giving away this exclusive Austin LeMay print, uh, part of Comics Curing Cancer this year. As we're expanding our reach. We'll have a booth at KingCon in New Jersey, April 6th, and we've got this limited to 50 Spider-Man with the uh, cancer recognition band. The, the universal color for that is purple. The web is intertwined around it. So uh, these are limited to 50. We have a few artist proofs that we had come in to make sure that everything was good with them. So we're giving those away along the way, and we're going to give one away tonight. If you can't be there, you have an opportunity to win one. So hashtag we are legion in the chat. Yeah, it was, um, it was another issue where it was kind of like uh, the things that, that just will not happen now because – um, Jeff John left to, um, you know, to do ghost, you know, ghost machine, uh, oh, because right. it, the, the Legion of superheroes was supposed to come out of this justice society of America as well, because we see the introduction of the legionnaire, uh, at the end of this issue, we come to find out that the legionnaire is actually Mordru, who, if you know anything about Legion history, um, Mordru is a huge, um, nemesis, arch enemies, or whatever, you know, always fighting the Legion of Superheroes. So, um, there know, it is. to make me dizzy. There you go. Um, so yeah, I mean, it How was you um, think about that. This is a this is dude, this is a nothing burger. Yeah, it's uh, unless they find unless they find someone else to pick up the threads that he's doing. Um, the Legion of Superheroes was supposed to come out of this out of this mini series. I hope they just get another writer for it, man. Yeah. Like, I know this sounds bad, but if there's ever a time to give a, a new young up-and-comer a chance to cut their teeth, I mean, a lot of times it doesn't play out well, but at least you can, you know, like, like, yo, yo, Jeff, if you got a script or a concept, pass it off. You know, like give them, throw them a bone. Let, let, let the fans eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Pop's Attic, too. He says Mordru has ties to Amethyst and Gemworld as well. Yeah. Um, Wasn't Mordru a Jim Starling creation? Uh, I'm not sure. I want to say even going back as far as um, maybe not to Jim Shooter. Not, the, no, the I meant Shooter. I don't know why I said Starling. A Jim Shooter creation. That brief time Shooter was at DC. Yeah, well, he actually, you know, I mean, he was a, like a 14 year old kid writing Legion yeah. of Superheroes um, comics, you know, for the longest time. That would be a good one to pick up. I need to check on that. That would be a good one to pick up if that's a shooter book, because shooters typically at Heroes now. That would be a fun one to take to get signed. Yeah. Flight like Johns went to the young Mordu in his last JSA run. You need a seasoned historian to tackle Legion and Jet. Do that. You couldn't be more more correct. Mm -hmm. And that's it's hard to find those these days. You know, like Johns came in as that. Like uh Jeremy Adams has come in as that. 
Like hit Jeremy Adams has cut his teeth as somebody who knows how to handle characters from today all the way back to 1940. But those people are few and far between. But having said that, give JSA to Jeremy Adams. Yeah. Give or even or Legion even leader. Jeremy Adams. Who? Or even Legion. Give J yeah. give Jeremy Adams to Legion. Dude, sure he did the JSA Marker, animated yeah. movie for us, even you yep. know, like yep. There it is. Thank you, Brother John. Shooter and Swan created Mordru. Shooter's going to be at South Carolina Comic Con in two weeks. I will not. I save all my money, all my excitement, all my love for Heroes Con. Have you seen the lineup this year? It is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's Shelton's uh, birthday or anniversary or something, and they're that. I guess that explains why they're going so big. Like they are going insanely big for it. I want to name off some of these names for y'all because it's it's completely different than what it's been the past couple of years. Brother John, I'm doing this just to entice you. I hope you know that. Chris Claremont, Adam Hughes, Carl Story, Joshua Middleton, Stephen Platt, David Finch will be there this time, Jim Starlin, Lisa Trucian, Rick Parker, Beavis and Butthead, Lou, uh, Lee Weeks, Richard Peeney, Pascal Ferry, uh, Wendy Peeney, Steve Epting, Daryl Banks, Gene Ha, here we go. Happy 70th birthday to Shelton Drum. Yep. 70th. Roy Richardson, Carl Potts, Larry Hama, Howard Mackey, June Brigham, Michael Cho, who just did that awesome cover for Godzilla Kong Justice League. Jim Shooter will be there. Confirmed. There it is. So I need to make, I need to get me a copy of that. I want that book. That's the one I want. Carl McGee, Joe Stanton will return. Jimmy Palmiotti, Amanda Connor, Rick Leonardi, Bill Morrison, Stephanie Williams, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez will be there, John Beatty, Adam Hughes, Allison Sun, Mark Buckingham, Patty Cockrum. Here we go. Howard Chaikin, Michael Golden, Dan Jurgens, Ron Lim, Ron Friends. Steranko, Jenny Frisson, John Jang, Roy Thomas, Ron Wilson, Scotty Young. It's it just keeps going. It just keeps going. It is insane this year. Uh before we uh, over the list, I was bounced this year. We'll have to start prepping for next year. It's not gonna be the same without you, brother John. You know that. Before we move on from JSA, let me just put in a plug. If you if you're able to uh get the uh the Tony Harris B covers. Um, I did get that. I got it and I gave it away. Yeah. Um, he's doing a couple of them. He's doing the next one too. I think, and he did the last one too. So they're just, uh, they're just gorgeous. Yeah. So, uh, for every Tuesday, I do a a DC live stream on Tuesdays to preview the DC books for that week. And I always do a weekly giveaway. And I try to, and this sounds petty, but people love them. I try to get lovely lady covers and there wasn't a more lovely lady cover this week than that one right there. That was, that was the one. That was it. As far as the story goes, uh, what did you think of the story itself? It was just, it was kind of a, kind of just a their story. Yeah, I mean, it was good Other to see the appearance of the Legionnaire. Yeah, and you know, it was good to um, go back and recap the uh, um, uh, the you origin did. of the original well, Mister Terrific. Yeah, well. we're kind of just place setting lost kids. It was fun chasing around the Harlequin through the city and everything. Yeah. That's the slippery Joker right there. Yeah, exactly. But it was it was a fun issue. I like the uh, the Mister Terrific stuff most definitely. But uh, that, that's kind of heartbreaking to know that this is a setup issue for a story that we're not promised now. Dude, the JSA get the crap into the stick all the time anymore. Ever mm-hmm. since like New Fifty Two, we haven't had a proper JSA. Now that. That comes with an asterisk, of course. We have the Earth 2 stuff coming out of New 52, which I absolutely love, love, love. But as far as like the return of the JSA with the return of everybody else, it didn't happen for years until Doomsday Clock. And then that's all it did was it just they appeared in Doomsday Clock. And then they teased us with the Star Girl Summer Special and then pushed back and pushed back. And then we finally get the new Golden Age. And it's been, as always, plagued with delays and now... Now uncertainty. That's a bummer. Did you just bum me out, Paul? I'm sorry. Okay, you didn't hear it. 
Speaking of Tony Harris, did you see he announced he is going to be doing a monthly series for a publisher in the coming year? He posted a very Starman-looking image with the announcement. Well, I hear Starman, I think JSA, so maybe maybe there's yeah, hope. There you go. There we go. Man, it, it's got to be oh, man, dude. I'm I don't know. I'm I'm kind of torn now. I'm debating South Carolina. Kind of want to bring my Captain Action number one for Shooter and Bat Soup's Shatner cover for Will. Just go to Heroes, man. Just go to Heroes. Come hang out with the like 50 plus community members here on the YouTube that'll all be there. It's gonna be a blast. It's gonna be a blast. Heroes Con, you got time to plan for it still. All right, let me see how many people got entered in this. We got 13 people entered, 16 people watching. That's close enough. Oh, we're doing U.S. shipping only on these as it is an odd thing to ship. Of course, if you are a channel member, I will cover the difference for sure to get it shipped worldwide. So uh, good luck, everybody. Appreciate all you coming and hanging out tonight. And uh, Sorry, I forgot to do this last week. Worked out just fine. Prince going two. Oh, we're gonna spin again. <laughs> Joker has has one. There we go. That was in there from when he put the hashtag in at the beginning of the stream, probably. I did. I did. I wrote print down on the sticky note. Sector 25. <laughs> nice. Congrats, Paul. Thank you. So that's coming your way. I assume DJ has your address. You should. Yep, absolutely. Oh, oh, DJ is here. Okay, he's still lurking. <laughs> yeah, congrats to you, DJ. We're not going to let you get by saving on shipping. Yeah, all the, I was kind of trying to figure out a way to get one of those, and now I, and now I do. I have one. Yeah, all so. the artist proofs that uh, came in came into DJ. He's he's really like been like uh, the mastermind behind facilitating all this, making this happen. With this King Kong thing, he's been fantastic with it, and he sent me my copy. A long time ago and i've had it just sitting up here quietly and just to see if people would notice and um yeah so uh boom he's going to be sending it to you he said he'll get it out tomorrow he messaged me last week he's like hey did you forget to do the giveaway i'm like i sure did i told him i, I forget the legion loot like at least three out of every four times that paul reminds me but yeah that's that's going to do it for this week. I have a video coming out tomorrow. It's uh, something about Canada. Y'all don't want to miss that one. Uh, some cross-eyed Canadian. And then, of course, <laughs> the comic vlog that I'm doing it comes out every Wednesday. If you're a channel member, all this content is ready for you now over on my channel. If you're not a channel member, if you go to the channel, you should see it's my, my landing page, the main page. It shows you all this stuff that's coming for the week because I try to upload. I try to get everything uploaded like by Monday or Tuesday in uh the top 10 new comic book video will release Tuesday afternoon after my new DC stream for channel members, then Saturday. And don't forget, I've run three live streams a week. Sunday nights, we're here. Tuesday afternoon, I'm here for the DC day. And Friday mornings for the Legion Lair, which is a pop culture hangout chat with the community that's a fairly open channel, as long as you're uh, somebody that can uh, just know you. Know, like, I don't let strangers come on and show their peckers. Can't have that on the platform. <laughs> With all those creators there, Chaken, Starlin, Golden, Peeny, Rickley, Nardi, no way I could afford all of them. Wow. Yeah, and dude, they're super comparable prices for a lot of people for sure. Like, I, it kind of surprises me, but yeah, you definitely have to uh, you have to play it right. Like, if you're just wanting to meet him, say, hey, and get a signature, and th th I know a lot of people wouldn't want to do this, but uh, one year, like, I, I used my uh, con booklet, you know, everyone I went to. Like uh, all my signatures are just on that. I don't think anyone charging pops is watching. He like did not a single person charge me for their signature on the the con brochure because they they know like yo dude that's obviously just their souvenir. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just don't film Starenko while he's doing it. Oh, I'm gonna film Starenko. You know I'm gonna <laughs> film Starenko. What is going on, Christina Payne? If there's one thing I do, I film Starenko despite him not wanting to be filmed or despite his, uh, his man, his man, not wanting him to be filmed. That clip's not in here anymore. Now, now it's breaking my heart. <laughs> I'm going to have to put it back in. Here. I still have my JRJR clip in here. Cause I absolutely love that one. So we'll end on a heroes con clip tonight. I appreciate everybody coming and watching. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Be sure to check out sector 2815 on YouTube. We'll be over there 
for the new DC Day video. We'll be talking MonsterVerse crossover with DC, catching up on the entire series just in time for the finale, so you won't have to miss that. And then Wednesday night at 9.30 on Sector 2815's channel, we'll be doing Guess That Key live show, massive giveaways, huge guests. Uh, John's Comics with Kids will be there with uh, Ryan Sargent, a.k.a. Fire Guy Ryan, the writer for the new book Crashdown that's co-written with uh, – what's Tom's name? Tom, Tom Garcia. Comic Tom Garcia. There it is. I didn't remember his last name. I apologize. But so it'll be a fun show. First time having Ryan on. Uh, John is a returning guest. It'll be a good time. Uh, we'll see you guys there. Thanks for hanging out. As always, he's Paul. I'm Mark. But we are Legion. And you're welcome to come use one of the eight easels we have set up for creating art here at the show for consideration for our art option on Saturday for our major option at 8 p.m. at the Weston Ballroom. And the smaller options we'll have here on the convention floor on Sunday starting at noon. That's a flash from the past. So any artist that we have here, either as an exhibitor or artist in Artist Alley, 